In the last video, we talked about polar coordinates and how to plot points and regions using polar coordinates. In this new video, we're going to talk about converting between polar points and Cartesian points. So polar is where we have R theta. Cartesian is when we have an X and a Y. We get our four identities from basic trig identities. X equals R cosine theta y equals r sine theta, x squared plus y squared equals r squared, that's the Pythagorean theorem, and tangent of theta equals y over x. So these identities come from trig, and we're going to use them to convert between Cartesian and polar. So from polar to Cartesian, we want to find the Cartesian coordinates for the following points given in polar coordinates. And our first point that we're given is 3, negative pi over 4. So that means r is 3, theta is negative pi over 4. So I know I have the identity x equals r cosine of theta. So I can just plug in the numbers. That's 3 cosine of negative pi over 4. I also have the identity y equals r sine of theta, so if I plug in my r and theta, I get 3 sine of negative pi over 4. So now I have to think about what is cosine of negative pi over 4 and sine of negative pi over 4. So we go back to the unit circle, and um, my negative pi over 4 is in quadrant 4, it bisects quadrant 4, and I know that the x value at that point is square root of 2 over 2, and the y value at that point is negative square root of 2 over 2. Now that's on the unit circle. Because our r is 3, our point is not on the unit circle, but I can use the unit circle to find cosine and sine of the value um, for the angle negative pi over 4. So 3 cosine of negative pi over 4 will be 3 square root of 2 over 2. So I just did 3 times the square root of 2 over 2. And 3 sine of negative pi over 4, our y value, will be negative 3 square root of 2 over 2. So our Cartesian point is 3 square root of 2 over 2 comma negative 3 square root of 2 over 2. So that's the x and the y. Those are the Cartesian coordinates. So anytime you're going from polar to Cartesian, you use those two identities, x equals r cosine theta, y equals r sine theta. Let's do one more practice with that. So from polar to Cartesian again, find the Cartesian coordinates for the following points in given polar uh, given in polar coordinates. And I have the point 5, 7 pi over 6. So again, I have x equals r cosine theta. So x equals 5 cosine of 7 pi over 6. y equals r sine of theta. So y equals 5 sine of 7 pi over 6. And on my unit circle, I know that 7 pi over 6 is 30 degrees more than 180 degrees. So in other words, pi over 6 more than pi. So it, it is in um, quadrant 3. And we know that the x value and y value there are negative square root of 3 over 2, comma, negative 1 half. So plugging that back in, I have x equals 5 times negative square root of 3 over 2, and y equals 5 times negative 1 half. So my point is negative 5 square root of 3 over 2, comma, negative 5 halves. And those would be the Cartesian coordinates for the point given in polar. Now we're going to go the other way. Given a point in Cartesian, so given the x, y, how do I get the polar point with the r and the theta? 
So from Cartesian to polar, we want to find the polar coordinates for theta between 0 and 2 pi and r greater than or equal to 0 of the following points given in Cartesian coordinates. So our first point is negative 2, negative 2. And I know the negative 2 is x and the negative 2 is y. And to find r, I'm going to use the identity x squared plus y squared equals r squared. So r squared equals negative 2 quantity squared plus negative 2 quantity squared. So r squared equals 8. I know when I take the square root I get a plus or minus, so r equals plus or minus the square root of 8. But let's look at the restriction we were given. We were told r is greater than or equal to 0, so I really only want the positive square root. So r is equal to the square root of 8, which simplifies to 2 square root of 2. So we've got our r value. Now we have to figure out how to find our theta, our angle. So what I'm going to do is plot the point negative 2, negative 2 on the xy plane. And that shows me that I'm in quadrant 3. And the angle I'm looking for is always made with the positive x-axis. That's how we define theta in polar coordinates. And so I'm going to draw the ray from the origin to my point negative 2, negative 2. And then theta is the angle uh, that is made from the positive x-axis to that ray. Now my identity is tangent of theta equals y over x. And sometimes that doesn't give the angle that we're looking for. And this is because of the, um, the range of tangent inverse. So in this case, because I'm in quadrant 3, when I do the inverse tangent of y over x, I'm actually going to get a reference angle. So I'm going to call this reference angle theta sub r. And that reference angle is between the negative x-axis and um, my ray that's going from the origin to my point. So I've got my reference angle. So I go ahead and do tangent of theta equals y over x. So tangent of theta equals negative 2 over negative 2, which tells me that the tangent of theta is equal to 1. Now my reference angle, theta sub r, is equal to tan inverse of 1, which is pi over 4. So because I'm in quadrant 3, I know that my reference angle is going to get added on to pi. So the negative x-axis has an angle of pi. So theta equals pi plus pi over 4, which is 5 pi over 4. So then my point in polar is going to be r comma theta, so 2 square root of 2 comma 5 pi over 4, and those would be the polar coordinates for the point. Now before we do the next problem, let's just do a little review of reference angles, because it may have been a while since you've um, done these in trig. So reference angles are always made with the x-axis. So you're going to have um, four categories depending on where your point is. So if your given point is in quadrant 1, then theta equals theta sub r. So the reference angle is the angle that you're looking for. If your point is in quadrant 2, then your reference angle being with the x-axis is going to be with the negative x-axis. And so your actual angle theta is going to be pi minus theta sub r. So theta is pi minus the reference angle and that will end you up in quadrant 2. 
if you're in quadrant 3, or if the point is in quadrant 3, then your reference angle is made with between the ray and the um, negative x-axis. And so your overall angle, theta, is going to be pi plus your reference angle. And if you're in quadrant 4, then the reference angle is made with the positive x-axis, but your ray is down in quadrant 4. And so I know that that line, the positive x-axis, can be thought of as 2 pi radians. So theta, going all the way around from the positive x-axis, is going to be 2 pi minus the reference angle. So those are your four possibilities when you're dealing with reference angles. So depending on which quadrant your point is in, you'll either be subtracting from pi, adding to pi, subtracting from 2 pi, or if you're in quadrant 1, you'll just get your angle when you do the inverse tangent. So it's always important to figure out where your point is, which quadrant you're in, before you actually do your tan inverse, and then you'll know whether or not you're getting a reference angle or your actual angle. Okay, so let's do one more example from Cartesian to polar. We want to find the polar coordinates with theta between 0 and 2 pi and r greater than or equal to 0 of the point 3, 4 given in Cartesian coordinates. So I, when I plot my point 3, 4, I know I'm in quadrant 1 and we'll go ahead and draw the ray from the origin to the point. So I know that the length of that ray is r and the angle between the positive x-axis and the ray is theta. To find r, I'll use x squared plus y squared equals r squared. So r squared equals 3 squared plus 4 squared. r squared equals 25. r equals plus or minus the square root of 25. And my restriction is r is greater than or equal to 0. That was given in the problem. And so r equals 5. Some of your homework problems may ask you to use a negative r, in which case you would just take the negative of the square root. Okay, let's find our angle now. We have tangent of theta equals 4 over 3, y over x. So theta equals tan inverse of 4 thirds, which is approximately 0.927 radians. And because I'm in quadrant 1, that is my actual angle. I don't have to worry about a reference angle in quadrant 1. So my point in polar coordinates is 5, 0 0.927. So just to review, anytime we're going from polar to Cartesian, use the x equals r cosine theta and y equals r sine theta identities. If you're going from Cartesian to polar, use x squared plus y squared equals r squared and tan theta equals y over x.